A very good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Arthira Rajshri, a PhD scholar under the guidance of Dr. G.B. Aravind at JSS Medical College, Mysore. Today, we will be discussing on the systematic review on the applications of forensic proteomics. So, you would be familiar with the terms such as genomics, transcriptomics, metabolomics, etc. A similar branch in the series is known as proteomics. The term proteomics was coined by Mark Wilkins in 1994. And proteome means a total set of proteins expressed in a given cell at a given time. And the study of these proteome is termed as proteomics. Now, why do we need to study proteomics? Well, the aim of proteomics is the dynamic protein product to study the dynamic protein products of the genome and their interaction. Why do we need uh, the, to study these? So we know that the protein synthesis starts from the transcription of DNA to RNA to mRNA and the translation to proteins happens. Now, during each process, the chances of modification increases, or let's say that the variations increases from each step. Now, this implies that the genomics do not have all answers to our questions. The behavior of gene products is difficult or impossible to predict from gene sequencing alone. So even if a gene is transcribed, its expression may be regulated at the level of translation, which means that there is a gap between cellular function and that of the DNA. And proteomics is a field that promises to bridge this gap between genome sequence and the cellular behavior. Now, what is its application in forensic science or why do we need to implement the proteomics into forensics? Well, we all know that in biological forensics, DNA is undoubtedly effective for human identification from various sample types, such as blood, skin, urine, hair, etc. However, in some cases, DNA might not answer questions such as tissue type or samples, or in worst case scenarios, DNA samples is sometimes unavailable or they might be degraded. And this is where the proteins can persist and thus be analyzed for a better results. But currently and unfortunately, forensic proteomics is in an early stage of development because its applications are very much limited to tissue identification, body fluid identification, protein toxin quantification, and human individualization. But all the about uh, applications are general biological tests, and what we can emphasize more is on the estimation of post-mortem interval through proteomics. How is that possible? Now, currently, one of the most used techniques for postmortem post interval is to include uh, the rigomotus, to analyze the rigomotus of the cadaver. Now, how do we do this? In post rigomotus, we are mainly focusing on the muscle stiffness, and it, it can be seen throughout the body. Now, when we talk about muscles, we also know that our body consists of muscle proteins. Now, this is where the proteomics comes into picture. We can study this degradation of the muscle proteins, their presence, their absence, their metabolites, their, the products that are formed after a while, after the cessation of life. All these can be studied when it, through proteomics. Now, how is this applicable in estimating the postmodern interval? Let's say that we have, a, for example, let's say that we have a protein A. Now, after the cessation of life, after death, this protein A might degrade or it might form other products such as B and C. Now, while studying this B and C, we will be able to estimate the time since this person has been dead. Now, such studies has been covered by most of the international works abroad, but uh, unfortunately, it's not been that prominent in India yet. Now, the advantage of proteomics compared to the other immunological methods that require antibodies and PCR using specific primers is that proteomics have reduced time and uh, a reduced cost also. But, uh, well, for, as there is a challenge for every uh, upcoming technologies, there are equal challenges for proteomics as such, telling that it's a lot of complex because we have more than 1,000 proteins and their variants that are present uh, in in proteins, and there is generally a lack of technique, absolute technique for the quantification of these proteins. And again, uh, as I mentioned before, we have a limited throughput of today's proteomic platform right now. Uh, when we compare ourselves to the other international uh, platforms, we are very much lacking in such areas too. 
So uh, this is the basic update on the systematic review of how we can apply proteomics in forensic science. And there are many research scopes also for the same, including proteome mining, functional proteomics, and structural proteomics, and protein interaction. Of which I think, well, I personally think that structural proteomics can be of more, given more emphasis because it will be more, uh, more easier for us to study the structure of the proteins using bioinformatics and proteomics club together. And uh, it can also be used for the estimation of PMI, which will be a uh, which will be of more use for the forensic science community. Well, uh, that's all about the brief description of the application of proteomics in forensic science. And uh, thank you all for your patient listening, and I'll be happy to answer any of the questions. That's